Under One Roof MTL, hosted by Robin Flynn, featuring mortgage brokers Fred and Martin and real estate expert LJ Aguinaga. Presented by Fred and Martin Mortgages and LJ Realties. Good afternoon. Welcome to Under One Roof MTL, where we are demystifying home ownership one week at a time. I am Robin Flynn, joined as always by LJ Aguinaga of LJ Realties. What's up, LJ? How you doing? And we've got Martin Spaulding of Fred and Martin Mortgages. Fred is away on vacation this week, so good for Fred. But we've got Martin, and that's all we need. Oh, (laughs) I'm I'm not sure about that. I mean, I call Fred the godfather of mortgages Mm -hmm. because he's got deep, deep, deep knowledge. Treasure trove. Uh, You know, he's also got 10, 12 years of experience. And so I hope to live up to his expectations and to his, and he sets the bar pretty high. He does, but he also deserves a break. So we're happy for him to get a little bit of rest. No, he's Um, a hard worker. Oh, definitely. As are both of you. So I'm going to pat you guys on the back. You're hard workers. Some of the hardest working men I know. Thank you very much. Hard working. How many hours are you going to be on the air today? Uh, all day, <laughs> basically. <laughs> You're going to be sick of me on CJD. Uh, guys, let's start with our trivia question of the week brought to you by Felix and Norton Cookies. You can visit their store at the Blue Haven Shopping Center, 3705 St. John's Boulevard in DDO. If you think you know it, the first person to text in the correct response to 514-790-0800 will receive delicious Felix and Norton Cookies delivered straight to their door. Our question this week, in Quebec, what is the minimum down payment required to to avoid paying mortgage loan insurance. If you think you know the answer, 514-790-0800. We'll give you the answer a little bit later, though. We're not going to make you wait. And... Well, I guess <sighs> if you listen to the show, we'll probably talk about it, too. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, all of these questions, if you listen to the show regularly, you should know the answers. Yeah. Do your homework. Take your notes. <laughs> Remember what you learn on this show. Uh, lots of stuff in the news this week, guys. Inflation finally fell below 2% to 1.6% for the month of September. But that has largely been uh, because of gas prices dropping. You may have noticed when you're filling up your gas tank that it's a little bit cheaper than usual. That's gas prices dropped 10%, which is quite a decrease. So that's kind of driving inflation right now, right? Yeah, but there are two sides to the coin, though, because you keep reading gas prices are down Mm -hmm. because uh, there's an increased concern over a weaker economy Uh oh so are we heading towards the r word yeah i don't want to say it but what do you mean are we how, how how is the are we the question here we know we're heading there you think you don't think we're gonna dodge a bullet how are we not well you looked at the job numbers in september and they were up and that's yeah. what's sort of mixing everything up right now. And I think I mean, every no, we're we're going to talk about we're going to talk about what's going to happen on October twenty third and perhaps in December in terms of interest rates. But you know, there's no clear path right now. And like I, I read through all the literature this week. Oh, he's making. A face. I like LJ's face this, right now. It's a face for radio. radio. <laughs> yeah, you can't see it, but he's grimacing. He's grimacing. No, because uh, you know, you, so you're sort of going, okay. If we're if we're truly heading towards a recession, then why are the job numbers up? I feel like it was a mixed bag. Mm. There you go. So, and I feel like job numbers, at least to the best of my knowledge, is something that they can play with so much. My understanding is that they get job numbers based on calling around randomly, effectively, and based on what they've heard and kind of what they've seen. That there isn't as much confirmation truly where we stand on this front. And do we know what kind of job numbers these are when they just say job numbers are up? Are these high quality, high wage jobs or are these minimum wage jobs? Because there's tons of those that are open right now. More jobs are created than were lost. And so and they beat the expectations. And so that's why. Who set the expectation? Oh, God. Who? Who? You know, who's got an agenda, right? Which economist has an agenda? Which government party has an agenda? Who's got an agenda? They all do. And who's skewing the numbers? <laughs> and that's why if we're going to take out of all the metrics we can use, the job numbers, at least to the best of my understanding, and I'm not an economist, is that that's the one that they can play with the absolute most. And that's the one that has realistically the least amount of truth 
behind it. And thus, that's the one that I would use the least when trying to come up with an actual estimation of how our government and economy is doing. Because they said we lost 47,000 part-time jobs. We added, I think, 117,000 of this type. A lot of them are primarily for low entry, kind of entry-level jobs. Yep. So unfortunately, the youth is out of a job right now, but we have new immigrants coming in, taking it. It's really a bit all over the place. And I don't think that's what's going to really push us forth. And therefore... I mean, the whole idea, are we in a reset? I mean, we're still talking about a 50 basis point drop October 23rd, and we're going we're gonna to roll right into that. But yep. is it 25? Is it 50? The only reason it's 50 is if we really think that we need a push in the economy. If we think we need a push in the economy, it's because we're throwing around that R word. Yeah. yeah. Usually, if, in- if interest rates are down and gas prices are down, mm-hmm. that usually means the economy is not doing so well. It's funny, though, but, you know, everything that I read this week, there was no mention of recession. <laughs> it's because they've been mentioning it for the last 12 months. They figured we'd sick of it now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a big interest rate announcement coming up this week, right? October 23rd, Wednesday, Bank of Canada. We're expecting another cut. It's just a matter of how big of a cut. Is it 25 or 50? So I went around the block. So. <laughs> I went, check, I went to check. I went to check. I went to check. So, you know, I went over to BMO. BMO is projecting 25. Okay. I went to Desjardins. They're projecting 50. Okay. Went to Scotia. They're projecting 25. And then I went to CIBC, and they're projecting 25. But I think the Fed, the fact that they went down half a point, mm-hmm. uh, is influencing what Canada is projecting to do. So I think October 23rd, and I might be eating crow next week, uh, I think it's going to be 50 basis points. Okay. Even though it's three to one based on what you just said with the bank saying yeah, what 25. Do they know, what do they know? <laughs> what do you Nobody think, LJ? Them. I think that they've been going slow and steady. And I think that there's the the 50 basis point, I think, might just potentially give out the wrong impression. They, they want to hold people on to believe that we're not necessarily heading into a recession right now, mm. which is why I think they might sit pretty at that 25. And I mean, look, it's still 100 basis points or one full percent throughout the course of the year so far. I suspect... We'll probably go 25-25 for a total of 1.25 by the end of the year drop now. That's where I think we're at. Yep. So I, I don't know if they're going to go with the aggressive 50 today because, again, we do not going to see the results or the impact of this probably until about six months' time. So slow and steady. Take that elevator down. I think, or Sorry, the stairs down. Take the elevator up. And I think that's what they're going to continue to, to go with at this point. So we saw the feds made a big cut, but they skipped the last one, right? So Canada that was, was their making first cuts. Cut. It was their first Exactly. Cut, yeah. So Canada has been making cuts when the Americans weren't. Progressively. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think it will necessarily, I don't, what do I know? But I don't think it'll necessarily <laughs> impact what the Canadian bank does. So where are you planning, where are you planting your stake there, uh, Robin? I'm going to go with 50 because I am <sighs> optimist. Yes, because I want to see it come down as a variable mortgage holder. I would love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm here by proxy. So I think Fred would go 50. <laughs> I would yeah. agree. Yeah, he's been aggressive with these rate cut predictions. So, I mean, we're already at what he predicted for the year, right? So, no, not yet. Well, oh, this announcement. This announcement will, bring will us... put us to where, what he announced. Yeah. Exactly. He had said one percent by exactly. the end of the year. He'll be victorious. A hundred percent. Yeah, we all owe him a coffee, basically. Do you no, want to go? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's such great news for uh, borrowers, for potential home buyers that we need to celebrate this. And the mere fact that he's winning, as I mentioned last week or the week before. He's going to take us out for dinner. I think Robin and I will chip in for the coffees. See yes. how much we're saving with these drops. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? It's not that big of an amount of money that you're saving every month. When it goes down by 25 basis points, you're saving like 30, 40 bucks a month on your mortgage. That's at least depends what it's been in my amount. case. Yeah, it depends on how much your mortgage is. But as I always say, 30, 40 bucks better in my pocket than somebody else's. Absolutely. 100%. This is the Mortgage Minute. What are our down payment and closing costs when purchasing a home in Quebec? This is your Mortgage Minute. In Quebec, the minimum down payment for a home is 5% of the purchase price for homes up to $500,000. For homes priced between $501,000 and $999,000, the down payment is 5% on the first five hundred dollars and 10% on the remaining amount. Homes over a million, for now, require a down payment of 20%. Closing costs are 1.5% of the home's price and include such things as notary costs and the welcome tax. These expenses and others need to be factored into your budget when thinking of buying a home.
You're listening to Under One Roof MTL on CJD 800. I'm Robin. That's LJ. That is Martin. Home ownership is very expensive. It's not just coming up with the down payment. It's qualifying for a mortgage. It's actually paying that mortgage. And you also have to worry about your closing costs. There's so much that goes into buying a home. And a lot of people, my generation, millennials, we're in our late 30s, early 40s, are becoming very disenfranchised. They're very stressed out. They still haven't bought their first home and they don't know if home ownership is possible for them. Do you think that their parents, the Gen Xers and the Boomers, have some sort of responsibility, if they're able to, to give their kids some money to purchase their first home? Is that something that parents should be discussing with their kids, LJ? I don't like the they have a responsibility to. Okay. Nobody has a responsibility to anything other than making sure that you've provided the best you can to your children to set them up on the right track and make sure that they're healthy and, and kind of taken care of to that extent. But obviously, once we become adults, technically, it's our responsibility to kind of pass along forth and, and go from there however we can. Yeah. Now, I, this is not at all to say that I don't encourage parents who are in a position to help their children by all means. Of course, I mean, it's one of the easiest ways to transfer wealth. There's no tax implication associated to it. There's so many good things about doing it at this point in time. You actually get to see the benefits of your children enjoying the fruits of that labor that you've worked so hard for and that you've gotten to obviously enjoy the appreciation and the compounding effect over however many years. Plus, I mean, if you can use it to get your kids to live closer to you, therefore your grandkids closer to you, I mean, it's a win-win for everybody all around. So again, it, that's kind of my stance on it. If we can do it 100%, I'm all for it. But the idea of it being somebody's duty, it's no one's duty or debt beyond that. For sure. I've, I've heard a lot from grandparents who are frustrated when their adult children have to move two, three hours away to be able to afford to buy a house. So if you want those grandkids to stay a little bit closer to home... Maybe you got to help your kids out, right? Sounds that uh, way. Another way to look at it, though, you know, <laughs> um, what we've noticed with a lot of our clients is the the real challenge is to get the down payment and closing costs put yeah. aside. Um, once they qualify, because rent is so high, a mortgage or a rent payment is pretty much the same thing. Yep. So it's putting that money aside uh, to be able to get to the reasonable amount, uh, even if it's only 5%. And 5% for a lot of people is a lot of money. So let's take a $400,000 purchase. Mm -hmm. That means you need 20000 for your down payment and you need 6000 for your closing costs. So that's $26,000. So what we often tell our clients is that buying a house is not an impulse buy. Yeah. You need to devise a plan. And you also have to take advantage of all the benefits that the, the, the different um, levels of government are offering you. So what I would do if I was to start all over again, um, if I could move back to the house and live with my parents for a couple of years yeah. and instead of paying rent, uh, save that money and use that money for a down payment, that's something I would look at. But that's not probably realistic. So what I would look at is... How much can I actually save on a monthly basis? And then I would set up my bank account so there would be a direct withdrawal so I wouldn't feel that money on a monthly basis. Then at the end of the year, I would take that money and I would look at RSPs, mm -hmm. FHSA, TSFA, and all those accounts that actually give you a tax benefit. And when I got my return, I would roll it back into my RRSP where I roll it back into my FHSA. And that way... You have a plan to start saving for your down payment and your closing costs. And I, I see that uh, LJ is raising his finger. But the other thing that I'm saying is that a lot of the time people empty out all their accounts to come up with a down payment and closing costs. And that's something that we don't recommend because when you purchase your first house, you realize, oh, my God, I have to buy linens. I have to buy dishes. I have to buy a lawnmower. I have to buy this. I have to buy that. Yep. And if you're completely tapped because you just managed to get enough for your down payment and your closing costs, then you're going to be really house poor. Yep. And that's no fun at all. No. And LJ? moving is expensive too, oh, right? Just the, just the move. Yeah. That's a lot of money. So let's talk about two things on there. Um, first of all, the 6000 in closing costs I think is a bit shy, to be honest. When I look at my calculation on that $400,000 purchase price, I think we're going to be closer to 11000 in, in closing costs. I, I'm using pure math. So I'm, it's 1.5% generally the, is the, the bank exact, requires. That's what the bank requires. But in, re, in reality, you need a lot more money than that. And that's because I include inspection fees. I include notary costs. I include adjustments at the notary. I include your CMHC tax that you're paying because you put less than 20% down and the welcome tax. So yeah. Those are kind of the five metrics that I'll typically include in there. So to me, that number is really closer to thirty thousand six hundred and seventy-one with fifty cents. <laughs> no, but <laughs> and the, 
fifty. The, cents. But the reason I got to twenty six is that's what you have to show the lender. Exactly. Right. right? To qualify. And because it's all about as Fred, if Fred was here, you mm-hmm. gotta qualify. That's the most important part. And but they, even that example that you gave of four hundred thousand dollars is not super realistic. I saw LJ, you put some numbers in our notes for today. You know, the average home price in Montreal five years ago was more than four hundred thousand dollars. So if you're looking to buy a house post pandemic now in Montreal, it's gonna cost you way more than that. Yeah, so doing, it is, but I was, I was doing easy math. <laughs> well, we're gonna get into that. I just want to give a bit more clarity on what you mentioned before, Martin. The best strategy that we spoke about almost, I guess, close to a year ago now, but earlier this year, um, was the start off with using the um, home plan, the HFSA, effectively, then take the savings from there, roll that into the RRSPs, and then take that into your TFSA. Make sure you do it in that order to get the biggest tax benefits from everything. Max them out if you can, obviously. And like Martin said, it's so important to make a budget and to actually make these payments happen automatically because if you don't see the money you're not tempted to spend it you can actually live within these new means and not just say oh well i have this little bit of extra money lying around i'm going to go to the to the bar to the club to the shopping whatever whatever your vice happens to be you know it really helps you kind of stay on that track to get back onto the idea of home prices i mean i, I just pulled up some stats yesterday for in preparation for today and the average price of a single family home in Montreal, and I'm talking about the Greater Montreal area here, was in 2019 that was 515, and in 2024, sorry, this is on island of Montreal, was 735 thousand wow. dollars. That means that we've seen an increase of 43 percent over the last five years. Just five years. Five years. That's a big <laughs> increase. And like we got a text now at 514-790-0800 who says the kids after a certain age should be helping out their parents, not the other way around. Grow up and paddle your own boat, wow. which is a very common sentiment, right? Know, that's kind of hostile, though. It, it is, <laughs> especially if you want if you want the best for your children, which I hope most parents do. It, you need to kind of acknowledge that things are very different than they were when you bought your first house in the 80s or 90s. So I knew we were going to talk about this. And I, so, of course you did. So I went to look up the stats. And so... Uh, we're in the midst of the greatest wealth transfer of all times. Uh, one trillion will pass from the boomers to the millennial, millennial kids in the next 20 years. Wow. So there are parents that have a little bit of a nest egg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so give your kids a leg up. Now, there are a ton of different options for that nest egg, right? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people who are thinking, you know, I just retired. I don't have a ton of money. I have my retirement savings, but I need that to survive. I'm not rich. I'm not wealthy, but there are options. Is your house paid off? Could you consider a reverse mortgage? We've talked about that on this show. Can you have your children move back home and live rent free so that they can save up for a down payment? There are still ways you can help your kids without writing them a check for $100,000, right? Do it for the kids. Do Do it it for for the the kids. kids. I, I want to add two points on there. So we talked about prices, but there's other ways of getting into home ownership, right? Re- most recently, we were doing a transaction for a duplex in Lachine. Um, the asking price on the property was five ninety nine. So although we're talking the average price of a single family home property is at seven thirty five on island, you can still find a duplex for sub six hundred in a great location with great properties. You're receiving, I think, in this deal in, trans- in particular, the upstairs rent was one thousand five hundred and sixty dollars a month. You'd occupy the ground floor unit with a nice backyard, yep. and you have your living costs completely offset. Yes, you obviously have to qualify for that purchase, but you're still getting to consider some of that revenue from the upstairs. The down payment will be a little bit higher. The closing costs will be a little bit higher, but you get to offset it by the fact that you're receiving almost $17,000 a year in rental income from the property. Is that the property we worked on together? Exactly. What a fantastic property. Oh. I mean, I, I looked at it, Fred and I looked at it, and we're, we're not investors in real estate, not unlike uh, LJ. But I'm sitting there going, "Wow!" For five ninety nine, those kids picked up Excellent a property. gem. A she's twenty two years old. Wow, she's twenty two. Her um, boyfriend is, I think, thirty three or thirty two or whatever. But they got on the right path. They got set up. They they got organized. Oh, she's a firecracker. <laughs> This is indeed Under One Roof MTL on CJD 800. I'm Robin Flynn. That's Martin Spaulding. That's LJ Aguinaga. And we are with you until 1 p.m. Um, we got an interesting text before the news that I know LJ would like to take a moment to respond to. So I'll remind you of the text. The kids after a certain age should be helping out their parents, not the other way around. Grow up and paddle your own boat. And this is about a discussion we were having about boomers and Gen Xers potentially helping their millennial and Gen Z kids to purchase their first home. Gifting. 
gifting yeah. either the down payment or figuring out some way to help them get or into that first home. Right? Co signing. There's a variety of ways that an adult can, or an adult, a parent can help. Yeah, yeah you don't absolutely. have to write a, necessarily have to write a check. But no. we were talking about it off air, and, and, I, and I mentioned that you know investing in your kids who want to buy a property is an investment in generational wealth because yep. it's still your principal residence is still the best investment you can make in Canada. Absolutely. You can um, even loan them the money, right? There's some people who have great employment income, but they don't have the savings yet. And if you have access to a line of credit on your principal residence already, if you happen to loan them 30, 40, 50 K so they can purchase the property and they're in full capacity to pay the interest on it and pay you back throughout that entire period, they just need that jump start somewhere, you know? So we said um, co-signing a loan, lending the money, gifting the money. I mean, there's tons of ways that you can get It's just the leg up. That's, that's all it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not saying that you have to empty your, empty your <laughs> wallet and, you know, uh, and... And spoil your kids. Just give them a chance to get into their first property and let them build equity. And that equity actually could be used to finance your retirement later on. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You give a little and you'll get a little. That's 100%. Um, guys, what are some of the best interest rates you're seeing right now? That's what everybody always wants to know, uh, I right? Know, but interest rates is, you know, it's a only it's half a, the story. A, yeah, it's a cash twenty two. Fred I know. Was here, he would say, he would say you the know conditions, what, conditions of the loan. Because you know, I can tell you, we lost a deal this week based on five basis points, and I'm convinced that client's going to call us back in a year and a half when they're in the process of breaking their mortgage, <laughs> and they'll be confronted <laughs> with a massive penalty. Yep. And we will pull out the email and say, read the fine print. Because there's no free lunch out there. So five basis points is peanuts. I mean, it's a Starbucks coffee on a, well, Starbucks coffee is probably a bad example. It's about $100 <laughs> right now. So, yeah. But a Starbucks coffee on a monthly basis. Yep. And if, you, if you're convinced, convinced that you're going to see the end of your term, then go for a lower rate. But the lower rates come with steeper conditions. So what we're seeing right now on a five-year fixed, um, for a while we were seeing some 399, but that seems to have disappeared. Right now we're in the 419s. Okay. Um, and for a, an insured mortgage and uninsured, we're seeing 444, 445, uh, sorry, 444, 454, 464. But it's all a question of timing. You call us and we'll start doing the research where we've got access to about 30 lenders and often lenders have a promotional period. So if we land at the right period, you know, they'll offer a rate for a couple of weeks. And, um, if you contact us. Uh, we can go and get you that rate, secure it for you, hold it for you. Um, but right now, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the 419 for insured, 444, 454, 464 for uninsured. How long are you holding that rate? Well, because actually when you pre-qualify a client, actually the rate is a little bit higher. Uh, but we can hold the rate 90 to 120 days. Oh. And when you say hold for 90 to 120, is that from I mean, the time? They guarantee the rate. So the lender will guarantee you that rate. For 90 to 120 days. And if the rates should go down, then we can go back to the lender and get the lower rate. But the opposite is not uh, the is not true. And yeah. that 90 to 120 days, is that from the time I get an accepted offer? Is that from the time I go to the notary? What, what's the delay? It's on? a date. But a date? It's to, a date. To go to the notary or to... It's a date. Okay. That's vague. <laughs> is it intentionally vague? No. It's, okay. uh, you know, once you actually get a promise to purchase and you fulfill the conditions, mm -hmm. um, we, as long as it's in that window of opportunity, those 90 days or 120 days, you'll get that rate. And if we get to the end of the 90 days or 120 days, we can always call back the lender and ask for an extension. So that hold is typically just to get an accepted offer gone through fulfillment of conditions. So you no. do have that kind of time. The, the best thing to do is to get pre-qualified before you hit the market. You have to. For anyone who's thinking about hitting the market without getting pre-approved and not just qualified, you need to get pre-approved or else you're wasting everybody's time, including your own, most importantly. Yeah, but you know, also, I'm also seeing, you know, and I, you know, you're the real estate agent, I'm the mortgage guy. Um, we're seeing multiple offers. So when you show up with a pre-qualification letter saying that I'm pre-qualified for the financing and you're uh, bidding against people who are not pre-qualified, nine times out of ten, your pre-qualification will trump everybody else. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. What can okay? Let's, I had to use the word Trump today. Ugh, did you? <laughs> it's Kamala Harris's birthday today, actually. Is it? So happy 60th birthday to the Vice President of the United States. You know she went to Westmont High. She did Montreal Connection. There you go. Okay, let's say I've got my down payment and I'm ready to start thinking about looking for a home. You know, I've got some money saved, but maybe my credit's not the greatest. What can I do to set myself up? for the best possible interest rate and conditions. You know, I'm ready to buy a house. I've got that money saved. What do I do? 
There's two things. You book a meeting with me and you book a meeting with Fred Martin. Oh. Yeah, those are going to be your first two steps. Yeah, you guys give great advice. You'll be able to look at their credit report on yeah. Equifax. Yeah, well, it all depends on when, when you're talking about credit. I mean, if your credit report is under 650, then you're in trouble. If it's over 650, then we can manage that. But under 650 six, is considered average, right? Yeah, like most people are in that, that range. That means you, you haven't been disciplined. And so, you know, what you got to do is you got to pay your bills on. You got to pay your bills on time, but you also need to pay your bills. In other words, you can't forego a bill for a couple months thinking that I'll catch up later. That destroys your credit. And and you know what? Even if you do always pay your bills on time, this is the situation I found myself in. I never miss a bill payment. I am always on time. But my debt to credit limit ratio is quite high. Yeah, if you're carrying a lot of debt. You know, that will kill you. Let's say your limit is 10000 on a credit card and you constantly have 9500 on it. Yep. That works against you. Yep. Even if you're making your minimum payments. So try to use less than 30% of your credit capacity on all the lines of credit that you may have. So 30%, that's sort of what one thing should be your target. So now you've got your down payment saved up. Now you need to pay down your credit cards to get them below 30%. That would and be the next step. And if you're not disciplined, stop using credit cards. Pay yeah. cash. <laughs> yeah. Because you can, you can see the, you know, when you're actually rolling the money out of your wallet and paying for things, you actually feel those payments as opposed to putting them on credit. And at the end of the month, you go, oh, I forgot I spent all that money and now I don't have the money to pay off my credit card. But if you're yep. paying cash for things or even debit, um, then you're not, you don't have those unfortunate surprises at the end of the month. Yep, makes a lot of sense. Earlier this year, we spoke about a report that predicted Montreal home prices could increase by as much as 8.5% by the end of 2024. LJ, is this still a reasonable expectation? Well, I decided to do some research for us in preparation of of it. And the median price in Q4 2023 for the greater Montreal area was $540,000. Drumroll, please. The median price as of this most recent quarter, so Q3 2024, was $590,000. If I take that from a percentage perspective, we are already up 9.3% this year. Wow. So imagine if you bought a house a year ago. That's It is the Mm -hmm. best investment you can make. And when you sell it, you don't pay capital gains. Which is even better. Exactly. Even and, better. And it's crazy because people... And, are, and sorry, you can use that equity to support your parents in their retirement. You definitely could. I but went full circle with that. One step forward, <laughs> if you were to purchase a property, let's say $600,000 for simplicity, you only needed roughly forty forty five thousand dollars $45,000 to purchase it between down payment, minimum, etc. You're up 9.3%. You're up roughly... $55,000. Effectively, everything you invested into this property, you've already made back in equity so far this year. Wow. One GIC, year. A GIC wouldn't have paid that, and the market probably wouldn't have paid that either. Not even one year. Nine months. That's crazy. And it's 9%, and you don't pay capital gains. Boom. If you want to be part of the action in Q4, give LJ a call. 514-500-4040. He always answers. 12.51 is the time here on CJD 800, and you know we have our property of the week for you. You can go and lurk LJ's social media if you want to see pictures and videos. That's my favorite thing to do after the show. LJ, what do you got for us? Looking for your perfect home in Beaconsfield? Check out 99 Beaconsfield Boulevard, located south of the 20. This gorgeous four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bathroom home features a spacious corner lot, large fence backyard with an attached garage. The split-level design offers a bright living room with a fireplace, a modern kitchen with an island, and an office space. Located just minutes from schools, parks, shopping, and the train station, all this for just $889,000. Don't miss out. Visit us online at ljrealties.com for more details. Now, my favorite place to eat. What about the food? The food. (laughs) What about the food? (laughs) My favorite place to eat after a showing at this property would have to be Lou's in Point Claire. Just three minute drive from our listing. Check out their steaks or pasta options. Lou's. I've never heard of that. Check it out. Oh. In Point Claire. There you go. You know what I love about Montreal? No matter where LJ's property of the week is, there's an amazing restaurant nearby. There's a spot. Ooh. Like, it's not, you know, some cities, there's like a street you go to get good food. Like, I was just in Halifax. You got to go down by the water. That's where the good restaurants are. Montreal, every restaurant is a great restaurant. It's amazing. We are so lucky in the city. Is that where you tap the tap? Is not at that the, property. No. Not that property? But you know what? Thank you. You, you, should, check, yeah, you should check out. There's, there's actually a great clip of LJ walking through an, a stunning, stunning kitchen, and he taps the tap in the kitchen, and it mm-hmm. goes from black and white to color. I thought it was so really cool. kind of cool. 
but I'd love to know where that property is. So please stop by. I'll actually be there from 2 to 4 p.m. today. I'm hosting an open house at 2973 Place Cherry in the heart of Bois-Franc. It's a dead-end road and a little crescent with really, really minimal traffic. Mm. Beautiful yard. The client actually even bought back more land from the city to make an even larger backyard. The property is honestly spectacular. Two-car garage, four bedrooms. Come check it out. I'll be there from 2 to 4. Feel free to stop by. Say hi to me. I'd love to see you. And uh, yeah. Room for a pool? Uh, they used one? to have a hot tub. They removed the hot tub. I mean, okay. you could definitely, you could actually add a small pool for sure. The back left, 100%. You could Are you that. sending autographs, Stephanie? I always sign <laughs> autographs. <laughs> <laughs> the famous LJ Aguinaga of LJ Realties. Uh, guys, do you know the answer to our trivia question of the week? I hope you guys both know the I answer. I think we brought it up. Yeah. In <laughs> Quebec, what is the minimum down payment required to avoid paying mortgage loan insurance? Correct answer? 20%. Whoa. That's a lot of money. Noel in St. Laurent correctly answered our question. Atta so boy. he is going to get some cookies from Felix and Norton. Yummy. Congrats. Uh, we learned a lot. I always think the show goes by too fast, but I feel like it went really fast today. I don't know. Wow. Just flew by. Okay. We learned a lot this week. One of those things being the Bank of Canada is going to make another interest rate announcement on Wednesday. Martin and I are both in team 50 basis points. LJ's in team 25 basis points. We will reconvene next Sunday and see who was right. Uh, absolutely. Well, I think LJ's managing expectations, but I think deep downside, he's at 50. He's hoping for 50. <laughs> I, I want. <laughs> I would love nothing more than 50. It's good for my home. It's good for my business. It's good for everything in that sense. Absolutely. I do love getting those letters in the mail because my lender, even though I see it on the online portal, they mail me a letter that my rate has come down and my payment is coming down. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, every time I see that little first national in the mailbox, I'm just like, woohoo, get so excited. Great. Great lender, by the way. Love their portal. Yeah. They have one Great of the lender. best Great portals. So we work fun. a lot with First National. Not that we don't like the other lenders, but First <laughs> National has a great customer portal. If you want to manage your own mortgage, yep. uh, great lender to work with and very decent conditions attached to their mortgage rates. Just Marna good to line. Know. They specialize uh, in one thing. That's it. And, and we, we also learned that things are very different now than they were 30, 40 years ago. And parents probably should help their kids if they can to get into the housing market. Of course, you don't have to do anything, right? And situations are different. If your kid is a lawyer or a doctor and they're making six figures, maybe they don't need help from mom and dad to buy their first home. I think what we're saying is if you can. If you can. It's a and, great investment in your kids and yeah. it's a great investment overall. Exactly. And future generations in general. And yeah. And if you want to be able to see your grandkids more, if you don't want your kids to have to take on a second job and spend all weekend working so they can't come see you, if you want to spend time with your kids. Well, another make it option easier. we were talking about it off air is we should do a segment on interge intergenerational homes because mm -hmm. there's a new program coming out That's cool. in January. And maybe we should uh, put the spotlight on it next week. Let's Absolutely. Do it. I know somebody who built a custom intergenerational home and it works very well for her. She's got her parents close by, but they've got their own space, which is really cool. Built in babysitting. Built in babysitting. <laughs> I mean, my dad lives six doors down from me. So like he was my babysitter this morning <laughs> when I came here. So huh. it's great. Um, also, the other thing we learned is Montreal's real estate market is hot, hot, hot right now. Ooh, interest rates are coming down. Property values are going up. Don't wait to enter the market. Call Demand and supply. Demand, demand and supply. Demand and supply. Call Fred and Martin to get yourself pre-approved and then call LJ and start looking for something because you want to do it now before it's all gone. Actually, more and more we're working files together and it works really well. It's like a one-stop shop. You guys are in the same building, which is really cool because you can go to one office, just walk down the hall, do, 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 <laughs> and go to LJ's office. And there's pretty good coffee there, too, if I say so uh, myself. Ooh. <laughs> I have sampled the coffee when I've come to see you guys in person. Our treat. Yes. Thank <laughs> you so much. They brought the beer back as well, actually. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I don't drink, but that's cool for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's People, nice. People, we had a client, we had a client <laughs> last week who was like, oh. Come and plan your mortgage to have beer. a beer. <laughs> yeah. That's very Quebec. <laughs> Something about that is very Quebec. Uh, that's pretty much it for us this week. A reminder that Under One Roof MTL can be heard live every Sunday at noon right here on CJD 800. To learn more about us and the show, you can visit our website at underoneroofmtl.com. Uh, you can send us questions too if you like info at underoneroofmtl.com. I just set up my new phone and I made sure that the inbox for our email was well set up on my phone so that I can answer your questions or pass them to LJ Fred or Martin who can probably answer your 
your questions a lot better than I could. In the meantime, reach out to LJ and Martin individually. LJ, where can people go to reach you? Check out our website, ljrealties.com, or on all socials with the handle LJ Aguinaga. That's L-J-A-G-U-I-N-A-G-A, or LJ Realties, I-E-S at the end. You can also call or text me at 514-500-4040. I always love getting those texts from you. That's awesome. Martin, where can people get in touch with you and Fred? So building on what you just said, um, if you guys want us to tackle a certain topic yes. on one of the shows, send us a recommendation. And more than likely, we'll use it. So if you want to get in touch with Fred and I, it's very easy. It's fredmartin.com, fredmartin.com, fredmartin.com. And if you're curious what we look like. Now, this is something that I, I was a big radio fan when I was a kid. That's why I went on to work in radio. I used to always close my eyes and listen and picture what the announcers looked like in real life. It's so much easier now because we have the internet and social media. So you can actually look these people up. I went years without knowing what Terry DeMonte looked like, but I listened to him every day. You can see all our pictures on the website under one roof, mtl.com. And on social media, we have clips from the show. So you can actually see us speaking, which is kind of neat. It's very, very cool. Magic, magic. Go to Instagram. We're huge on TikTok, guys, also. <laughs> huge <laughs> on TikTok. I think we're stretching, but no, there are a lot of clips on TikTok. Yeah, it's Segments very, very from cool. the show, so. It's amazing. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for us this week. For LJ, Fred, who is vacationing, and Martin, I'm Robin. This has been Under One Roof MTL.